Hi guys, thanks for watching Rue. Uh, I really appreciate all the feedback and, and the people that watched it. Uh, it, you know, I'm not, like I said in the first one, I'm not really good at this thing. Um, I just feel like it's something that I'm supposed to be doing. It really kind of, you know, it kind of detangles my mind. So I really enjoy it um, and I really appreciate the people who have been supporting me through it. Um, so I plan to make more videos and I really love doing it. So, um, thanks for watching and for watching the future ones too. Um, I really appreciate it, but, uh, this next one's pretty cool. I love this whole series. So I hope you enjoy it and feel free to let me know what you think. So, thanks. Everything intended to be is patiently working. He's patiently working on me. He's patiently working on me. Okay, so in part one, it talked about God and oxygen. It talked about the creation of the earth, everything in it, the creation of man. Uh, and we saw this beautiful life, this perfect life that the Lord had created and wanted us to originally live in. Uh, and so he always stated, and it was good after he made something. And we just saw this perfection. And so when we left off in part one, we left off on the note of why can we no longer live this way? Why is life no longer able to be attained the way that it was originally intended to be. And so that's what we're going to touch on in part two. And so part two is called gravity and sin. And we're going to touch more into sin, but I kind of wanted to give a brief history about it because it's kind of a beefy topic. So I wanted to just kind of give some dialogue to it so that it makes more sense. So starting off in Genesis 2, 8 through 9, now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that are pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So at this point it was only Adam. So when he meant that he put the man that he had formed in the garden of the east in Eden, that was Adam. And when he was talking to him, he had one request. And request is like used very lightly because it was more of a, I very much highly recommend that you do not do this thing because it is very bad for you kind of thing. So in Genesis 2, 15 through 17, he said, Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. So I don't know about you guys, but if the Lord told me that, I absolutely would not do it. But there are circumstances that happen later. So uh, a little bit down the road, Eve was created and you know, they were given everything that you could ever think of. They were given food, they were given each other, that was huge, and then they were also given the power to take, they had power over everything except for each other, and that is huge. So this life that they had was absolutely perfect, it was good, and then the serpent shows up. Uh, Genesis 3, the very first verse, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the other wild animals the Lord God had made. So, that's when you know that something bad's about to happen. And so, the serpent starts talking to Eve, and he starts saying to her, Did God actually say this? Or what did he actually say? And he starts getting in her mind, and he starts getting into her head thinking, oh, what did he actually say? Oh, so it's okay to actually do this. So he gets her to end up eating the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and she also gives it to Adam. So then they both have technically sinned, I guess you could say, at that point. Going forward, Genesis 3, 7 says, Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. But if you look at Genesis 2.25, it says, Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. So they literally went from being naked and not feeling any shame to 
having their eyes opened and realizing they were, they were both naked, so they made coverings for themselves. So sin was already taking its toll, and it just progressively gets worse. So now we know the origin of sin, so now we're going to see the daily obstacles because of it. We're going to see the adaptations to it, and we're going to try and find some solutions to dealing with this because sin is, like I said, a very beefy topic. Okay, so I had to change locations because my phone was gonna die, so that required leaving. So that's why the background's different and everything looks different, but it's the same same story, same concept, everything's good. So starting off with gravity and sin, those are things that we struggle with on a daily basis, whether we know it or not. So that's kind of why I wanted to touch on those topics. Um, and I wanted to start off with sin. Um, we kind of just left off on that with the with the origin of it and kind of a little bit about it. But um, so we have this picture of the earth and we have heaven above it and we are on the earth. And so sin holds us to the earth. It makes us a part of the flesh. It makes us earthly. It, it disconnects us from heaven and God. Um, and so we, we kind of see how much of an impact sin has already had on humanity and, ha and um, God's creation, but there's so much more to it. And that, again, that's why it's, we're touching on it. So Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the wages of sin is death. That's, that's big. Um, that is why it was so highly recommended for Adam to not eat from the fruit of the tree because God knew that sin would be so corrupt. Um, and certain types of sin, things that I don't even think about on a daily, I don't think about daily. And I also don't really, I kind of underestimate certain things. But Galatians 5, 19 through 21 says, The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and like I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Um, and so it's kind of just stating again, like, I mean, it's just stating the disconnect of, of heaven that we have because of sin. Um, and so not only did you see the immediate impact of sin on Adam and Eve, but when they have children, Cain and Abel, um, Cain kills Abel due to jealousy because he thinks that Abel has a better job than he does. So he kills his brother because of it, like m murders his brother because of it. Um, so sin is just taking over. Uh, so to switch gears to science um, and gravity, gravity is the same thing. Like we have the earth and we have space and gravity holds us to earth. It makes us a part of the earth and um, literally holds us down to the earth. And gravity is technically negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And it, we kind of un understanding gravity allows us to better live on the earth, I guess you could say. So kind of like understanding sin and how to avoid it. It's kind of understanding gravity and understanding um, how to better adapt to it. Um, so we have, we have things like physics, biomechanics, um, ergonomics, stuff like that. And um, so gravity is one of the forces that's on you daily. So you have friction, you have acceleration, velocity, etc. But you always have gravity on you. And what I mean by that is if you have a ball and the ball is moving, you're going to have a velocity, you're going to have an acceleration or a speed, and um, you're going to have... A friction force on it and then you're also including gravity so then if that ball wasn't moving you wouldn't you would still technically have all those forces but they wouldn't it's kind of it gets kind of complicated but um regardless gravity is still on you um at all times and it's literally weighing you down so then uh gravity also affects us too when meaning like when we don't think about it is like when we're laying down in bed like they they say if you sleep in a certain position like it won't hurt your back but that's because um 
you have tons of pressure being put on your back at all times. So like if you're laying down, you can have up to 25 kilograms on your spine um, of pressure and that's how you can get low back pain. And when you're standing, you have up, you can have up to 100 kilograms of pressure on your spine. And when you're slouching, that's why they say bad posture is so bad And like as I'm slouching, but you can have up to 275 kilograms of pressure on your spine. So that's why, because like this, because gravity is just always on you. And so that's why if you're staring at your phone, if you're staring at your computer screen, if you're sitting the wrong way, if you have bad posture, like all that gravity, um, is just is just pounding on um, improper technique and improper uh, posture. So, but if gravity and sin are something that we deal with on a daily basis, how are we adapting to that? This next piece is pressure. And the definition of pressure is continuous physical force exerted on or against an object. So with the category of sin, so 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert and be of sober mind. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So he is literally always on us, always pressuring us. And every single moment, he's just waiting for a moment to strike. So those moments that we become vulnerable, those moments that we just underestimate, oh, we're fine, we're feeling good, you know, like Satan can't touch us right now. Like those are the moments that he's, those are the cream of the crop. Like he that's when he pounces and that's when we go from like, wow, I thought I, have, I was having a good day to something small we think is small happened and then all of a sudden we're like, whoa, we are in a funk and this just really is hard to get out of. Genesis 6, 5-7 through seven says, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on earth and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground for I regret that I have made them. Um... I just think that this is this is nuts because when the Lord created the earth and everything in it, he always stated it was good and it was good and everything was perfect and he regretted that perfect creation. So the option was how do you adapt to having sin around you all the time? So the Lord used Noah um, and Noah and the ark. So Genesis 6, 9 says, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. So he chose Noah as a righteous man who would bring his family, build the ark, and bring pairs of every animal onto the ark so that he could take some of the creation that he had and bring it into a new life. So it was kind of like trying to restart almost. Um, but obviously he couldn't do that. And sin was literally getting to the point where it was so corrupt that God had to wipe his creation to, to sort of start new. So Noah built the ark and the flood wiped everything out. Jumping to science, um, the adaptation to gravity is, is kind of like I mentioned before, we have physics, we have biomechanics. Like we're understanding how gravity works so that we can better adjust to it. So ergonomics, if you're sitting at your ta if you're sitting at your chair, you know, all day long in a, in a cubicle, like you, you know, if you're sitting improperly, then you're going to have a lot of stress on your neck, on your low back. And so understand how to properly sit at your computer, how to properly like set up your computer and where your keyboard goes and, and your, uh, your mouse so that you can, so that it's not affecting you as much. Um, and so we have, we understand all the forces on objects too, but a one big thing was Newton's laws. So we have the first one, which is an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. We have Newton's law number two, force equals mass times acceleration. And then we have the third one, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the third one we're gonna to touch on in another video, but for the first, for, for this one, I wanna talk about the first one, which is, which is also known as the law of inertia. So basically, if you're driving in a car and you're going straight in the car, your body's gonna go straight too. But if you turn the wheel to turn left, the car goes left, but you still at first wanna go straight. So that's what inertia is. You just wanna keep going the original path until like moved. So 
that's how this that's how this all resembles is that it's exactly the same thing about sin so if you're following a path of sin then you're going to keep going down that same path it takes god driving you to a new path to get you off of the path you're on so whatever sin that you may be in like if you're if you're jealous of a coworker you're caught in comparison you're caught in envy you're caught in you know drunkenness like if you're caught in a in a path of sin like you are you are not going to be able to get yourself out of it like it's literally going to take god changing your path and for you to go the path that you need to with him and follow his path we have gravity and sin are obstacles we have the pressure that we feel daily because of it and the adaptations that we have with them so now it's will it ever go away what are solutions to this okay this last piece is resistance and that is basically the definition of like opposition or you know the it says like the ability to not be affected by something so resistance is kind of just it's pretty self-explanatory, like you're resisting something. Um, and so this time I wanted to start with science um, and kind of state, you know, like mentioned before that gravity is never leaving us. It's always going to be weighing us down. And the only way to adjust to it is to is to use it basically. And what I mean by that is if you think about sports and you think about, you know, those athletes who are using like parachutes when they're running or when they're swimming even, and then, um, or when they're using like resistance bands or whatever, like that's because it's resisting their movement and, but it makes them stronger by using more force to, to power through the resistance. So, um, and like kind of banking off of that, it's like if you have like a 250 pound D lineman, like they're not gonna be competing at a high level if they're just doing body weight exercises. Like they're gonna be using weights to increase resistance to therefore get stronger. Um, and so gravity is all about understanding it and then using it and then going from there. So you're using, you're adding weights to get stronger. You're adding resistance to get stronger. Um, and so understanding physics, biomechanics, um, is how we use gravity and go forth. Um, that is our solution. Okay, so sin is very similar. Um, we have the problem of sin and we have all the temptations that follow and we need to use what we know and we need to resist the temptations to get stronger. So um, it's like muscular strength where we need help to build strength, but the difference is instead of using weights to get stronger, we need God to get us stronger. God will give us the strength to get stronger and to fight the, these, fight the temptations and to fight the enemy and just always, you know, just being aware of, you know, when we're being tempted uh, and such. And so to break it down like once sin entered the world we had this bridge to god where we were connected and we we had this we had the ability to have a relationship with him but then um it was too corrupt and it just started to create brokenness everywhere so then noah was an attempt to restore that bridge but it just wasn't enough because sin was too powerful um and the lord had so the lord only had one option and it was to create jesus and jesus lived a life in the flesh he lived like us and he lived um you know exactly how the perfect life he was supposed to live he was he was sinless um until the point where he took our sins on the cross and that was the point where he restored the bridge for us to be connected to God again and that is what is so significant is that it's him taking the sins on the cross that gave us the ability to have a relationship with God and um and so so even though that we that sin is always around us and it's always weighing us down just like gravity it doesn't affect us like it used to because we have the ability to get strength from the Lord through it. So the only, like gravity, the only way to escape the earth is to leave the earth and go to space. Sin, the only way to escape sin is to leave the earth and go to heaven but the only the only option that we, the closest option that we have to doing that while living is having a relationship with god and that is 
the next episode, so I won't go into too much depth, but I just can't reiterate enough just how of having a relationship with God and just how powerful sin is. And then these these analogies are, you know, it's a it's a way to connect the dots, um, to kind of give examples of things so it makes sense at a basic level, uh, to for the most part. But I just want to reiterate that like sin is super powerful um enough that god's creation was ultimately destroyed and he regretted the creation so sin is no joke and the next episode if you tune in uh we'll talk about how to build a relationship with the lord and and why that's important and going from there tune in Thank you.